Hello, hello everyone. Uh, this is another episode from Cert Magic. Uh, this time is not with Siam. It's with me, Wadi Chari. Uh, thank you for coming. And as usual, we start with uh, reminding all of us about the Cloud Native Co Cloud Foundation Code of Conduct. Simply said, let's respect everyone, respect each other in questions and in uh, chat. So it's basically all about respect and treating each other as we would like to be treated. Uh, Cert Magic is like my weekly show. It's uh, usually Siam invites a guest. He's, uh, I hope Siam having a relax or a good time uh, these days. Uh, let's check and my camera was not positioned correctly. Okay, so this is the seventh episode. Uh, the Siam and his guest covered what is certifications, what you need to go for a certification or not, uh, troubleshooting, uh, workload and scheduling, among other things. Today I'm thinking that maybe we should cover something that is uh, common between the three certifications. First of all, who's, who am I? My name is Wali Chari, this is my Twitter handle, my LinkedIn handle, and my GitHub uh, repo. I have two GitHub repos, one for CKA and one for CKS. I work as an analytical analytics infrastructure support engineer in a large energy company. I, before uh, being interested in cloud native, I was basically administering HPC Linux clusters. Some of them are from the top 500. I'm passionate about configuration management infrastructure as code, and now I'm very passionate about software as code, as Justin Garrison and Chris Nova uh, debate the need for software as code as in Kubernetes and cluster ABIs. I'm advocating for open source automation, infrastructure, containers, and CNCF. I'm leading uh, an AWS meetup and Docker meetup in the local region. Okay, so, my main topic I was going to give today actually was workload and scheduling, and then I found out that uh, it's already covered. So what, what, we are, what I was thinking, I was thinking looking at the CKS curriculum, CKAD curriculum, and CKA curriculum, and finding something similar, something that is in common. And there is lots of commonality. You will find out that there is lots of commonality. Before I start going on the, uh, the certifications, and things like this, let's get some news. Let's get some news out. If you want to chat, if you want to ask me questions or anything, uh, please do. Uh, let me check, how can I check this? Okay, hi, yes, I can see Yufi Alam, and oh, Siam, Siam is here, so, I mean, come on, man, take over. Okay. So I thought you were relaxing. I mean, come on, either relax or take over. Uh, okay, so we have uh, some guests, so keep them coming. Tell us where you are from and why uh, you love uh, Cloud Native TV. So let's, before that we go into the main topic, let's do some news. I would love to do some news. So there's, there was an article and uh, me and Sayan participated in it. Okay. We were interviewed with other uh, guests. Uh, and this article is for reason to get Kubernetes certified and for reason not to. So if you are wondering, should you take the certification or you shouldn't, will it affect your uh, salary? Will it affect your job promotions, merit increases and stuff like this? What, what do I gain from doing certification? This is a good uh, article to read, okay? Uh, Scott. Carrie is the UK group editor for uh, IDG. He, he just wrote recently another uh, hot article about the failing of Docker. This one, how Docker broke in half. If you want to read this, please read the tweets from Solomon Hike to put this into context. 
Now, other news regarding certification. There is a new updates to the CKAD 2021. This will be coming September 28th. That means any exam after September 28th will be in the new format. And as you see, the new format looks much simpler, but there are new topics like uh, understanding ABI depreciations. There is admission control. Um, what else did I see? Uh, there is the CRDs and understanding authentication, authorization, and admission control. Okay, these are not really scary. Actually, they are they are very nice. And understanding security context, uh, service account, which mi we might cover in this uh, episode. Okay, talking about authentication, authorization, and mission control, this reminds me of a good article from our friends at Stackrocks. They have lots of good white papers. They are very simple and easy to read. One of them is about this new subject that is covered in the CKAD, and this is admission control. What are admission control, like limit ranges and, and uh, mutating webhook and validating webhook? So this is a good read. It's only 12 pages. Uh, if I mean, it's less than 12 pages if you, the cover and the uh, briefing and whatever. So this is one from Stackrocks, Guide to Kubernetes Admission Control. I recommend it highly for the new CKAD exam if you would like to learn more about admission controllers. Uh, GA, EKS Anywhere, which is a new uh, uh, Kubernetes distribution from AWS. It's open source. You don't have to be an AWS customer just became GA. What does that mean? That means basically, as Justin Garrison puts it, he has a tweet here, okay? And as he puts it, uh, that's, uh, that's a Kubernetes distribution you can run on-prem. Currently, it uses cluster ABI, and it has certain providers, like Docker provider, kind provider, but the current uh, production provider, I believe it's vSphere, but things will come. And it's supported by lots of partners like Suzy Rancher. So they have uh, support for it and stuff like that. So there is a, uh, a Twitter space and there is uh, a webcast. So look out for this and look out for Justin Garrison tweets. Uh, Steve, Steve Gigera and Michael F Forster and Andy, Mar Andy Martin. They just actually were streaming or finished streaming. This is a new uh, webcast targeted towards security. I recommend it highly because it's very diverse in terms of topics, and it's very easy to grab security from these, th uh, from these two guys, and especially from Andy Martin, who was the guest today. Another thing about security that could, could be nice for the CKS, there is this article from uh, Frederick Fernando. Uh, it's actually an old article, but I just saw it recently. Introduction to Kubernetes security using Falco. I'll put the links uh, later on, uh, on uh, a tweet or a blog or something, okay? And I'll share it with you. Okay, we have no questions, that's good. So, cert magic, we will cover the configuration as we said. Uh, tips for for any exam, you need to be you need to be ready, and that means practice, practice, practice. You need to get familiar with Kubernetes concepts, with Kubernetes tasks, and with the Kubernetes Cube Control Sheet sheet. These are the main three categories in the Kubernetes documentation, Kubernetes.io, that you have to be familiar with. Uh, of course, the Kube Control commands and how to optimize your Kube Control that would be nice. But if you cover the concept, the task, and the Kube Control Sheet sheet. I think you covered 30% to 40% of your exam. Okay. Now, there is a nice GitHub repo from DJ Cantasius, which is Dimitris, Dimitris Elias, Dimitris Elias, uh, and Anastasius. Sorry, Dimitri. Uh, with CKAD exercises, we'll try to do some. I haven't checked them yet, actually, but uh, let's hope to do some. Now, coming back, so this is the sheet sheet. Make sure that you, and you can see that I highlighted the, uh, this is the first thing you need to do. Uh, I don't think you need to do it anymore in the exam. You will see that you have auto completion by default. You might need to do the alias, but uh, on the new exam format, there's lots of things that have been enhanced. Okay, config map. 
that's what we're going to study today. Basically, the concept of configuration. Why do we need configuration, and why did I select this subject after I found out that uh, Sam has already uh, done the workload and scheduling subject? Two reasons. One reason, this week have been hectic week, and some of the issues for onboarding users was how do I share data with other, uh, with other services? So I am doing a deployment. I have several bots, and I want to share data among these bots. I need NFS read write uh, many. No, you don't. You can share data using config maps if it's sensitive data. Usually use it as a secret. And when we say secrets, it's not because they are encrypted, but because they have several controls that, that you can control access to them. So you can allow only access from Kubelet. You can do roles and roll our backs and stuff like that, which hopefully we can cover a little bit. OK? So this is what we're going to do, config map and secrets, and how to manage these uh, from bots and deployments. OK, and we might cover security context if there is time. And I want to show you just an example. If you go here, there should be, if I do config map, yes. So that's what I was saying about the task. You should find the tasks that are relevant to your certification and try to go over them. Some, most of the time, they point to a Catacoda scenario, which is actually good. OK. Uh, for security context, I will point you also to my friend, Eric Smalling and Matt Jarvis, uh, 10 Kubernetes security context. He has also videos uh, accompanying these. But this is a sheet sheet for security context. And it's very important for your CKAD exam and CKS exam. OK. I think we are done <laughs> with the introductions and stuff like this. Any questions? No questions? That's fine. Let's go. OK. So first thing we need is a cluster. You can use Civil, or you can use Catacoda, or you can use whatever cluster you want. When it comes to CKAD, it's much more relaxed. But still, make sure that you are in the same cluster ABI, just in case, yes, as the exam. So now we have 122. So basically, make sure that you are in version 121. This is something that you need to make sure, just in case one of the topics for CKAD uh, depreciation is that you need to know about uh, ABI depreciations. Like what? Like pod security policy is going to depreciate by 125. So it's still uh, time. However, uh, if there is an ABI that is related to the exam, you might need to be on the right uh, documentation so that you don't make any mistakes when referring to the ABI. How do you, I know which ABIs are available for me? And how do I know which Kubernetes version is, uh, is the uh, Kubernetes version that I am using? OK. So basically, I have already the alias. So OK, yes, I have the alias. So I say get, get bots. I have, oh, I have bots. Let's delete this bots. OK, I have issue with the auto completion. And this issue is usually because the uh, auto completion is not uh, auto sourced. I'd source it. OK, delete bots minus all so that we start clean. OK, and now I want to know the version. So I am version 120, which is not, uh, this is the client. So that's fine. The client can be one version uh, below or one version higher. So that's fine. It's better to be on the same version as the, uh, uh, the control plane, the ABI server. However, if you are one version, uh, if the miner is one version lower or higher, that's fine. Uh, the server is 121, which is the exam, which is the current exam. How do I know this? If you go to the exam curriculum, and you'll find that it's pointing to this version right now. OK, so this is the exam, uh, the uh, my setup. OK, how many nodes? Now, one thing of the exam that most of the exam covers is exploration, especially the CKA and CKAD. Do you know how to get your bots? Do you know how to get your uh, nodes? Do you know how to get, do you know? what IB addresses they are using. Do you know which one is highly utilized CPU-wise or memory-wise or something like this? Can you explore? Can you, can, do you know your environment? Yeah? So, okay, get nodes. 
okay, I have one node and it's running version 121. It has been running for the last 15 hour and it uses the new lingo, control plane and the, the old lingo master and this will be later removed. Uh, it will go gradually. Okay, now what do I need to know? We are talking about uh, ABI. How do I know my ABIs? And why do I need to know my ABIs? Okay, ABI resources. Oh, sorry. Typo. And you'll see, you'll see basically the ABI resources that are supported by your cluster configuration. Okay. So you see the name of the ABI resource, if it has a short name or not, which ABI version, that's the one you put in your manifest, and is it namespaced or cluster scoped, and what kind is it? Okay, now for the new exam, so we, talk, we said the new exam CKAD will be talking about authentication, authorization, and admission controls. Let's find what resources we have for admission. Okay. So by default, if I don't install uh, what we call uh, operators, an operator is basically data definition, which is called CRD, cluster resource definition, and the controller. And they will add more resource, they will add more ABI object, they will add more Kubernetes object that looks as first class. They will be, you will be able to see them here. But if we, I don't add by default, I will see that I have mutating, webhook configuration and I have validating webhook configuration. So this is how basically if I, most likely what you'll have in the exam, I keep, uh, uh, so most likely what, I don't think they will ask you to set up or to configure uh, an admission controller because this is more like a CKA uh, or CKS uh, topic, okay? But most likely, they will ask you to discover and to find the uh, configuration of an instance of it. So how do you, f so how do you find, uh, uh, where is my terminal, yes. So I have to, for example, do I have any running uh, mutating webhooks? So I do kget based mutating webhooks. I have nothing. And I check uh, validating webhooks. I have nothing. So validating and mutating webhooks has to do with authorization. Okay, so there is authorization, authentication, and basically webhooks. And the mutating, valid, uh, mutating webhook, if you want, for example, to enforce a policy, you put it there, so if it's not uh, included in the deployment, it will include some uh, uh, objects or uh, attributes to the deployment, like for example, it will add security context or something like this, or it will enforce the number of replicas. And the validating webhook, then it will validate whatever is uh, final uh, output of the deployment is correct. Anyway, uh, we are jumping fast. Let's go to our uh, main topic. <coughs> and we we have two ways to we can do it. Let's start from the okay. Let's start from uh, Dimitris website. So he says configuration and current exam it's eighteen percent. Let's see on the other exam on the new exam. So in the new exam it's not clear. Okay, it's uh, it's not clear how. But basically, define, build, modify container images. That means something also related to how to the best practices of building a container image, such as using the user directive and uh, when to use add versus copy, when to use uh, entry point versus command, and stuff like that. Okay, here we have in this application environment configuration and security. We have understand config map, create consume secrets understand service account, understand security account. So it is mixed with the CRD, and I showed you that the CRD is, is it's not something that you need to be afraid of. Uh, the authentication, authorization, and mission control, we mentioned the article or the uh, white paper from Stack Rocks, and if I go 
there is a very famous, this is from Kubernetes IO. So when you do a kube ABI request, like you're running a kube control, get nodes. So this will send a RESTful call, will send an ABI request to the ABI server. Yes, the ABI server will do certain tasks. It will check basically, are you authenticated? If you are authenticated, what, do you, what can you do? If this is done, then it will go to the mutating admission and the mutating admission will call webhooks. This could be internal in the cluster or it could, they could be external, okay? And they will uh, enforce a certain uh, policy. After this, basically, it will come to the object schema validation. And uh, again, this could be internal to the cluster or external. And if, if everything is fine, the object will resist an etcd and the controller will work on it later, okay? So this is the section of the CRDs. You don't need to be worried about it. Most likely it will be the exploratory part. I don't take my word for it, but uh, think about it. What can they ask you about it, yeah? Understand and defining resource requirement limits and quota. So limit range is, bar is an admission control. So maybe you can, maybe you'll need to set a limit range, or maybe you need to set a quota for the namespace. Okay, let's go. First question, create a config map named config with values foo la la foo to lo lo. Okay, so that should be easy. Okay, he wants us to create. So cube control, create. Okay, do I have config map? Yes, I have config map. And always I can use help. So help, here, help, cube control, create config map. I need to name it. I need to give it a name. And in this case, these are from file, but in the question it was not from file, it was from a literal. Okay, so I can say cube control create config map and from literal. So I can create a config map from literal, from literal, from a file, and from a directory. From literal is basically key and value. So what the question was asking, uh, asking key equal value, foo equal la la la, or whatever. Okay, so this is the first literal. And if I have more than one literal, I just keep uh, uh, bending from literal again. And the second one, foo to lulu. Okay, let's do this. Okay, now this is imperative and the way forward, if you really want to learn and do this during in your job later on, you need to do like a dry run so that this one doesn't actually resist on etcd. And you need to present the YAML, the YAML output. Uh, exactly one name. Ah, we didn't. So what's the mistake? And that's another thing which is good, actually. If you make mistake, this is good as long as you learn from them. So what's my mistake here? Cube control create config map. I didn't give it a name, so we need to give it a name. Did he say what name we should use? Create a config map named config, which is really a bad name. Okay, so I create a config map named config. Okay, now that's the, uh, so you see ABI version of V1. V1 means the ABI core group. So there are other named group like app. And now the data is full equal la la, so a key value. What kind of uh, object, what kind of Kubernetes object is this? It's a config map. So if you, if I do again my uh, ABI resources, grip config, you can see that there is config map. I can actually use a short uh, shorthand CM, and it is in the core group. So this is another way to, if you are confused about which version the ABI, especially in something that is, uh, you see here, for example, this is V1, beta one. This is have not uh, graduated yet to uh, GA. So this is, uh, so basically uh, it starts with alpha, then beta, then either it gets deprecated or it gets promoted. So if it's promoted, it's become GA, it will become like this V1. Uh, so there is a life cycle for the ABI and uh, sometimes the technical detail changes, okay? So this is the first question. 
Okay, now what I can do, I can resist it in a file. Let's call this file tconfig.yaml, which is a really bad name. What I can do, especially in production, I can use uh, like a prefix or postfix that tells me what type of object is this. Okay, and I actually use T in the exam so that basically I can validate the output while writing to the file in the same time. I want to optimize my time. Time management is very, uh, is a must. Okay, there is no, Yusuf, thanks for the insight. Thank you, Yusuf. Uh, keep it coming, guys, folks. Okay, now, I don't want to, I will not apply this one and I will tell you why. So. Usually, you should apply the, conf the, uh, the, the config map or the secret before you use them in a deployment or a bot or any other object, daemon set or whatever. But one thing while you're learning or practicing for the exam, try to do things out of order. Try to do things differently. What happens if I change the ABI version to something else? What error will I get? What happens if I do this before that? What error do I get? Or so basically, try to experiment, try to play around. And my camera keeps moving. Okay. Okay, let's see the other question. Display its values. Yes, we uh, show. Okay, let's see what his solution. Cube control create config map. Yes, yes, exactly. Display its value. Okay, he wants us to apply it. Let's apply it. So to apply it, you have two choices. You can do create or apply. I, I love apply because basically it can be partial if it's you are changing something uh, that is already exist. Okay, config map created. If I do k, k get cm, I can see that there are other configurations map before me. One is from me actually. Let me delete it. K delete cm backend uh, config. Okay. Now, if I do k-describe cm config, I will see that it's, uh, the configuration map is called config. It's in the namespace default, and this is very important. In the exam, most likely you will not uh, uh, implement things on default. Most likely you need to implement things on a different namespaces. So this command will be wrong in the exam. It's missing the minus n. It's missing the minus n namespace. So make sure that always you have, you have, uh, sorry. Let me mute. Uh, make sure you have like a system that you always put, for example, namespace before, okay, or after your commands or at the end of your commands. If you put it before, so that it you'll be flexible. You can say, for example, apply now minus F again if you have changed the config map. If you have changed, let's say that you have changed the config map. Uh, what was the name of it? Default apply. Less, yes. So k minus n default apply minus f cm dash config dot yaml. Yes, and it's configured again. Uh, <coughs> okay. Now let's go to the second question. Now, what's the difference between config map and secret? I said secret. You have more access control over it. Display its value. You can do cube control get cm config minus o yaml, or you just can describe. I I think describe works better. Create and display config map from a file. Now that's the other case. So he's inserting a key value in a file. So he's inserting foo three equal lily and another a key value into a file config dot text. Okay. If I cat config dot text. You see that he's using uh, uh, 
the i and i format. So it's equal instead of colon. The key and value are equals instead of colon. Okay, now it's the same thing. If I go back to the command, uh, so it's the same thing, but instead, instead of uh, from literal, this time what we do, this time we do from file. And we don't, we don't forget the namespace. Okay, if there is a namespace, we don't forget the namespace, and we don't forget the name. The name has to be exactly as the question is asking us. Create and display, uh, create and display config map from file. Create the file with whatever. Create and display config map. Okay, it doesn't say the name. Create config map to. Okay, that's uh, very innovative. Okay, uh, let's call this two. From file, ah, from file, and I have to give it a file. So the file was config.txt from file, unknown flag. Cube control create, ah, create config map, config map to, and let's use the shortcut this time. Create cm, config map to from file. Okay. And it actually give me the YAML shortcut when you have. Uh, different values when you have multi-line. So you have foo3 equal lily and foo4 equal whatever. And you see the data is clever enough to know that the file is called config.txt. Let's say that, the f and he wants you to read it from a file, but when you save it, you call it a different file name. My keys, like, like, like let's see, let's, uh, he's asking you to sp that the file name is so should be my keys, yeah? So you can actually put it here. You can say from file, but you change the file inside your YAML. So you say, look, I know that I'm reading a file called config.txt, but I don't want it config.txt in my manifest. I want it to be my keys. Yes? So, and now if you can see, it's called the, under data, under the data section, it's called my keys. Okay, and now we can apply that. Could be control minus N the namespace default apply minus f and the name of the manifest and this is applied now if we do k describe cm control shift v assign oh uh, what was it called uh, config map 2 okay so we have this what and ever. Okay, so let's uh, jump because this is really easy. Uh, okay, let's jump to uh, create and display config map from an end file. So basically here he's doing the same thing, key equal value, and then slash n for a new line, and he's putting a comment, then another key equal value, and putting another comment, okay? So, uh, config map from M file. So, yeah, okay. So this is like uh, he's assuming that the files are not key value. There, he's assuming that the file represents an environment variable, an environment file, which is the same format as a as a file. And then basically creating it's the same the concept. I create and display config map file, giving the key special. So this is what we did. So from file, and you, you can change the name of the file. That's what we did. Okay. Okay. So as you can see, config maps are really easy. What's this one? Uh, from literal, okay. Okay, now we run, uh, now we want to run a bot. Okay, now we want to run a bot. Let's do this one. And we want to associate it. I need to change my seat. This camera doesn't want me, basically. Okay, let's run a bot. So we ran a bot, the bot using image nginx, restart never, and uh, dry client. So this will produce a bot manifest. Okay, creation timestamp, it's a fine. I have a label as part of the metadata. I'm using container nginx with the name nginx. 
uh, it's not using any resources. And there is the DNS policy cluster first, which is the default restart policy never, which we specified so that we can get a bot. That's fine. If I run this bot, yeah. is there a way that I can associate it with the config map? Because one, so what are config maps? So config maps are a way to share data. They are centralized on the namespace. So, so when I do get k get cm, I can see the config maps. If I do k get secrets, which act as a config maps, I can see the secret. And the secret here is a secret for the service account. So I have a default service account by default. If I do k get sa, which is a short for service account, I will see by default I have a service account. In other Kubernetes distribution, you might have many. For example, in OpenShift, you have default, build, deploy, and something else. Here, we have one which we are not, it's, if we are doing our own application, it's not recommended to use the default one. It's recommended to use your own. You create a spe specific one for the application and you assign it uh, the required minimum permissions, minimum roles, and uh, role bindings. Okay, so this secret default token is actually the, the token for this service account. And it gets created by default when you create a new service account. So if I create a service account, and it's very easy to create a service account, I just say, okay, create service account, my app is A. Okay, so K get is A, K get a service account, I have a service account. K get secrets, guess what? Kubernetes created for me another secret for this new service account. Okay, if I say K describe secret, uh, and this secret, I always make mistake describe. Okay, I will see that this is a secret with this name. It's in the default namespace, it doesn't have labels. It's good to have labels if you can put labels, it's good. It has annotation. Basically, the annotation shows which service account name is associated with it, and the user ID for this service account. Okay, and what type? It is uh, Kubernetes IO service account token. Now, the data is basically using 7-bind, and there is a token. Now, this token is encoded in base64. So if you really need to use this token, like, for example, uh, authorization bearer or something, you need to decode it. Okay. So you decode it using the base 64 minus D command. And you can see now that this is the secret is using algorithm RS-256. And then basically this is the token. Okay. Now what I want, so now I have secret, I have configuration uh, config maps, and I have a bot. But the bot, I want to use the data inside the config map. How can I do this? There is another command. You can do it uh, by going to the uh, uh, documentation and finding how you define a config, uh, an environment variable, or how you mount a volume, how you mount the config map as a volume inside the bot, or you use set cube control set. If you use cube control set, you can see that you can set environment variable uh, on a bot template. So let's say cube control set env and see the help. Uh, let me check if there is any questions. Because I'm going, I think, very slow. Okay, there's no questions. That's good. Okay, so I can see example. I can see set env deployment, all container c1 env equal whatever. This basically remove the, uh, actually the environment. No, I want something like this. Q control set env from secret my secret deployment app. Okay, let's try this one. But before k get cm, k get pod. And now I want to bind the bod to the cm. So Cube control set env from, it's not from a secret, it's from config map. And the name is 
let's say config map to okay and I, what I do I want to set it in the bot that is uh, ah, that's actually the bot is not immutable I don't think this would work but let's try it yes so you see it gives me an error why because the bot object is immutable the only thing you can change in a bot object is the image uh, name or the image tag so it comes back it's try to change the uh, bot but then it said uh, fail to batch env update to bot template bot nginx is invalid forbidden updates may not change fields other than spec.containers.image you cannot yes so we need a deployment let's go back to the run command and instead of uh, run let's create deployment engine x dep image engine x remove the restart never and this should be deploy cat deployment yaml okay i have a deployment let's apply it let's check the bots okay i have a deployment that is coming up now let's change our uh, environment so instead of bot deployment deployment i can deployment basically because uh, the way deployment works i can change it so what the deployment is this this is the nginx dev control copy v was not found why ah sorry this is the bot so i need to i need the name of the deployment okay now if actually if I edit or describe my deployment, I will see this. Deploy. So let's see it. So this is an easy way. If you don't remember how to define environment inside a container or inside the bot, this is an easy command that will do it for you. And uh, the... Uh, why I like this command? Because basically it follows the best practices convention for environment variable. So you see that my keys, the environment variable, I used key my keys, which is a small letter, which is not how you define environment variables. Environment variable should be capital and should be separated by an underscore. So uh, you can see that it, 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 it created an environment variable, okay? and let's ge get bots and if we exec into this bot uh, to double check and we say dash dash and the command we want is environment and we grab minus i for my and we see that my keys has foo dot lily okay uh, let's shell ah, sorry sh uh, m okay so i have my keys equal foo dot lily and i have four foo four equal lily now this is strange this one let me double check why uh, ls cat cm config two dot yaml my keys for three equal lily here it's okay here it's not okay uh, the other one is okay so okay i guess that's the how the set works uh, it needs to be i think it needs we need another option okay anyway uh, what the time is we are 15 minutes to the hour uh, please ask your questions if you have any okay let's go back <coughs> uh, so basically what we have showed I have showed that I can create 
of course I cannot create a bond. I need to create a deployment. And if I create a deployment and I want to associate it with the config map, I can do it with using the command cube control set. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Now let's go to the last one, create a config map, another one with values. Uh, load this config map as environment variable into an engine export. So it will be the same. However, uh, in this one, you might need to use cube control explain. And this is another tool that you need to master for the exam and also for production. If you say cube control explain bot, okay, you'll see that uh, for me to define a bot, I need an ABI version, I need kind, and I need metadata, and then spec and status. Now, to define an environment, most likely it is under spec. So I drill down under spec, and see uh, under spec, what can I see when it comes to environment variable? So basically, I need what? I need uh, okay, let's do, uh, there's, it's too noisy. Let's do a recursive so that we can see the key straight away. And there is a lot. Okay, maybe this is the wrong example to use. Uh, spec. So basically this will be spec. Okay. We, so. So we know this is spec.container, okay? Actually, this is, uh, this is a case where actually going through the document is better. Unless you are looking for something that is not, yeah. So you see here, under container, I have arguments. If I want to pass arguments to the container command, command or command if I want to override the command that is used in the container, and I have env. And if I use env, I need to name the environment variable where uh, the value, and I give it a value, or I get value from. I can get the value from a config map, and I can say config map key reference, and I have to specify the name of the config map and which key I'm looking inside uh, the config map, which key I'm looking for inside the config map. And there are other things that I can do. I can get the uh, environment variable from a secret. And this, in this case, I use the secret key reference. Or I can do environment from, which is better than env, because this will uh, comply with the environment variable naming. That is, it will be capital letter and this word separated by an underscore. OK. So this is one good website. I mean, we. We, we didn't cover a lot, but this is one website if you are going to do the CKD. This is exercises for the CKD, and it's one of, uh, it has been updated like 29 days ago, 27, 21. It's, uh, it, it, it is quite up to date, okay? And hopefully that it will get up to up updated with the new exam format. Okay, now, What's the, what was the command to list all those options? Okay, yes. So this is uh, Mr. Just a second, if I can get my cursor. J, J. M. Raisha, J. M. Raisha. The command was cube control explain. Okay, cube control explain. And don't explore it before the exam, as you see now. Uh, so basically, Okay, let's, let's select something else. Let's select IBI resources. Let's say that in the exam that, you, that they are asking you to do something for an ABI resource uh, that is traffic. And you haven't really played with traffic before. Okay, so you say cube control explain and you, you put the object. Oh, sorry. Yes, you put the object name bot deployment, any ABI resource, services, whatever, okay? And it will tell you, 
Okay, in this case, there is not much. There is the kind, version, description, and this, this one doesn't really have an explain. Let's do service. Let's do service. Cube control explain service. Okay, and it tells you that basically service, if you need a manifest for service, you need to specify kind, and the kind is service, and the ABI version is V1, okay? And you have to have a metadata, and you can, and if you are wondering what kind of metadata I need for a service, you can say service metadata. And it will tell you what kind of metadata you have. You can have name, you can have namespace, your owner reference, resource version, self-link, UID. If you want them without explanation, but you want all of them, you can say recursive. Okay, so this will show you all the metadata you can have. You can have annotation, you can have cluster name, creation timestamp, all these are possible metadata fields. But no, I'm not interested in the metadata, I'm interested in the scope. Okay, uh, so you can do, the, uh, not, uh, sorry, not scope, spec. Okay, the camera is behaving now. So in the spec, I have all of this, but I am interested on type. What are the different service type? And actually, this is uh, like an interview question. Okay, people know just cluster IB and no uh, node board. And, uh, but, uh, so cluster type, you have cluster IB, you have, okay, it doesn't say external. Uh, okay, you have the load balancer. Yeah, external name. So, yes, so, okay. It does, okay, any other question? I mean, the bad news that Siam is not here, otherwise he would give, have given you a discount already. Uh, do you use AWS, uh, J. Maraika? Do you, use, uh, do you use public cloud, do you use AWS? Let me know if you use AWS. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, I don't know who's going to be uh, delivering the next webcast, but as we said in the beginning, there is something coming up. Uh, there is something coming up in October, and guess, okay. So basically, try so I don't have discounts for CKA, CKD, CKS, but I have AWS vouchers. Connect me and I'll, uh, I'll, uh, I'll give you a voucher. Yes, we like people that are asking and interacting with us in Cloud Native TV. And you have one uh, $25 voucher, so just connect me, contact, contact me uh, on Twitter and LinkedIn by smoke signals, whatever, okay? And uh, you'll get your voucher. And thank you for uh, asking, and thank you for uh, your time here. Okay, now let's uh, see, uh, make sure. Uh, so make sure that you register for KubeCon, and in KubeCon there is a security day in the day zero, and there will be capture the flag. Uh, so make sure that you register, and it will not be difficult but it will be very educational, okay? Uh, if there is no more questions, let's uh, see. Is there any more questions? Uh, what's my Twitter? Yes, uh, let's just second, I write it down. Oh, you can see it on, oh, you don't see it, just a second. Okay. Mm. Okay, it's at Wally Charlie. Okay, good, you got it, thank you. Haman, Tashkwa, thank you, Haman. Heman, Tashkwa. Thank you. Okay. Okay, let's, uh, what else do you need to say uh, regarding, okay, let's go back to the new 
uh, the new exam. Debugging in Kubernetes. There is a very nice article about debugging applications in Kubernetes from uh, Kate's Learning. Uh, it covers most of the case. But how do you do debugging? So basically, first of all, try to fail during your practices. Second, use cube control describe. Okay, let's do this. Uh, cube control describe. I don't think we have time. And cube control logs for the bot. Yeah, so it's basically cube control get events, cube control describe, cube control get events. Uh, from these three, you can really tell what the issue is. But sometimes you will know what the issue is, but you don't know how to resolve it. So this is how you practice and you try to break things while you practice, so that you get accustomed to what issues we have. Let's, uh, okay, I think I need to finish because there, there might be another uh, show after that. So thank you all for attending. And I hope uh, we learned something today. If you have any questions, uh, or if you, if you want to pursue, if you have any questions regarding certifications, regarding Kubernetes, regarding anything that I can answer or I can forward to somebody who can answer, let me know. Thank you very much and keep watching Cloud Native TV. There is lots of uh, resources and there is lots of uh, awesome people that are presenting. Hopefully I join this crowd. Thank you, thank you all. Yes, uh, the, the capture the flag will be really nice. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.